make me crazy Does that make me crazy Does that make me crazy Possibly I hope that you're having the time of your life I, That's my only advice Hello, everybody. Guys, it's great to have you wherever you're watching me from, whether it's the islands of the sea, the Maldives, Paris, France, Guatemala, Haiti, which is a failed state. Have you guys heard what's happening over there in Haiti? It's a sad state of affairs, literally a, a country that is falling apart at the seams in real time. Wherever you're watching me from, uh, Bogota, Colombia, Omaha, Nebraska, Lusaka, Zambia, Kwaka, Somoku, Chinsali, Kutuapia, Kundola, Kumansa, Western Province, Baroseland, Southern Province, wherever you're watching me from, welcome. I don't usually come to you on these matters, but I felt it incumbent upon me to, to throw in and to sprinkle a little SML TV dust on a, on a few topics. First of all, allow me to ask you, can you hear me loud and clear? Because, you know, the worst thing you ever want is to go live. That one is frustrating. Doesn't matter how you choose to paint that uh, portrait. As long as the, the message is not clear and the, the broadcast is almost incoherent, then there's a problem. Somebody says loud and clear, thank you so much. I have to watch both my, my phone and my monitor on my Facebook page just to, to suss it out. By the way, what do you guys think of this radio? You know, I got this radio. I was doing my vlogs in City Market. And for those of you that are on TikTok, because lately I've been on TikTok mostly uh, because I've recently discovered that TikTok pays creators way more than Facebook does. But although when Meta, the moment Meta begins to monetize and sort of this region is properly monetized, I'm telling you, Zambian creators are, not, are going to stop wasting time on, on Facebook doing nonsense. They'll, they will become creators because it's revenue and, and it's in dollars. You know, it's in, it's in U.S. dollars. It's not in Zambian kwacha. It's U.S. dollars. So uh, what was I saying? I was, I was vlogging the other day. I was in uh, City Market and I came across this stand that sells these radios. 
And unfortunately, a bystander who was, he had a bench in his arms and he, he sort of turned around and in the process of doing that, his, the corner of his bench knocked over one of the radios. And as you know, in Zambia, we have a policy, if you break it, you buy it. So this radio fell to the ground and splat. It broke off the handle. And so the two guys who owned the stand said to this gentleman, uh, The poor man stood there thinking, look, I don't have money to buy this radio. I broke it, yes, but it was by mistake. Those two guys didn't want to hear it. They said, no. So in my TikTok mode, you know, because, you know, TikTok people, I can only speak for my audience. My audience are very kind people. So some guy on TikTok, a few of them actually, said, um, because they call me Simon on TikTok. They say, Simon, how much is that radio? I said, well, the guys said it's 450 bucks, but there are two components. There's a solar panel plus this radio. So altogether, 950 bucks. So I said, okay, it's about 950 bucks, which works out to about 40 US dollars. So one of my TikTok audience members says, uh, Simon, I will send you that $40. You give it to those guys. They sent it to me. I gave it to the guys. Boom, I've got a radio. Now, somebody may ask, well, why didn't you give the radio to the guy that broke it? Well, I didn't think of it. I didn't. I should have, but I didn't. So here it is now. And incidentally, I must tell you, this is a radio. It works. It actually works. Okay. And I like it. Aesthetically, I think it's pretty. Tell me in the comments. I will highlight your comment. Tell me in the comments. What do you think about that radio? Tell me. Go ahead and break it down for me. Hmm? Did I, did I misspell donate? <laughs> I knew I was going to do that. Here, let me fix that. Donate. Because, you know, when you're a one-man show, you make mistakes. Donate. There it is. There it is. Give me a moment, guys. When a pastor asks you to donate 300 U.S. dollars, for his luxury Range Rover. There you go. There, it's fixed. That's the magic of reading comments. And that's why it's important every so often when you're doing your delivery on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, read the comments because the secret sauce is in the comments. They will tell you stuff that you're not immediately aware of. So thank you for that, whoever brought that up. Yeah, and somebody says 950 is too much for they they those those guys probably shook me down. Somebody says 950 is too much. Where's that comment? Okay, I can't see it. So so anyway, what I was saying was that I I I bought the thing and it's in my office now and I quite like it. I do. All righty, uh, before we get into the, a few shout outs before we do that, a few shout outs to you guys. Somebody says, what is, what are you saying? It's extraordinary. Yeah. Sell it. I'm not going to sell it. It's, it works. Search for the guy who broke it and give it to him. When she told that's too much work. I don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Well, the trade-off is the guy went away not having to pay the, the 950 bucks. And in exchange, I get a radio for aesthetics purposes as well. So I think everybody wins in this case. Everybody wins. Um, somebody says it's it's the pink. It's a keeper. An antique. It's wireless. Yes. But somebody made a comment about my, my pink tie. 
Did you say that about my pink tie? I can, you know, the, the, the messages are coming in fast and furious. Oh, by the way, and thank you for the shout outs, guys. Thank you. By the way, did you hear that OJ Simpson passed away? Incidentally, he passed away on my birthday. Can you believe this? Usually I don't sit back and relax when I'm talking to you because it, it reveals my belly. And who, who wants that? But I, I, I heard OJ Simpson recently died. He died on my birthday, which was the 10th of April. Don't ask me how old I am. We don't say that anymore. Now we don't mention ages. Anyway, I remember when OJ Simpson was on trial, I was a student in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at the time. And talk about a divisive case. Most 99% of white people in America were against OJ Simpson. 99% of black America were for OJ Simpson. They, they supported OJ. The white folks didn't support OJ. And it was one of the most divisive. Of course, I personally believe he did it. Okay, I believe he killed Nicole Brown Simpson. There's not a doubt in my mind that he committed that crime. He got away on a technicality. He did. He got away because he had a hotshot lawyer in the name of, uh, what was his, the lawyer's name? I forget his name now. Johnny Cochran, that's right. Johnny Cochran was his lawyer, hot shot, slick lawyer. He's passed away as well. But I remember the day, and I'll never forget this. I remember the verdict, the day that they were to announce the, the verdict. And I was in, uh, what was that? Shreveport. I was in Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, the, the, the time that they announced the, the verdict, the final verdict. The whole nation, the entire country of America, held their breath, literally held their breath. You could have heard a pin drop all across America. The whole country was waiting to hear, will O.J. Simpson be sent to prison for the rest of his life, or is he going to walk away a free man? Oh, I tell you what, it was one of the most tense moments I've ever experienced. The moment they, they shouted, the moment they announced, we the jury find O.J. Orenthal James Simpson, because that's his name. O.J. stands for Orenthal James, I think. Correct me in the, in the comments if I'm wrong. I think his name was, was Orenthal James, wasn't it? Tell me in the comments. Wasn't his name Orenthal James, OJ? Somebody says, I remember that day. The moment they said, the jury said, we the jury find Orenthal James Simpson not guilty. The entire black community cheered in celebration. The entire white community crumbled in pain and rancor and, 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 and shock. One of the most divisive cases I've ever seen. And, and all throughout his life, after he, you know, he was set free as a, of course, he ran into several different legal problems later. Remember, he went to prison for, you know, he held up some guys because they, according to him, they were holding his memorabilia and they got him on that. And he spent a few years in prison for that. But the whole time, OJ Simpson would walk the streets. Everybody knew he killed Nicole Brown. And um, what was the name of the, her boyfriend? What was his name? I forget his name. Tell me in the comments below. What was the, the guy's name? The guy that Nicole Brown Simpson was killed with? Because th th this was the thing. OJ discovered that his wife was having an affair with, with uh, this, this guy, and then he just unalived them both. Okay, He just slit their throats. Yeah, it is Orenthal James Simpson. But tell me the guy. What was the guy's name? The guy that was the, he was killed along with Nicole Brown. Tell me in, in, in the comments whatever his name was. Not, not that we're disrespecting the deceased, but I'm just trying to remember his name. Well, some of you don't know his name, and that's fine. And that's what happened. And so the 10th of April, 
unfortunately, of course, we don't celebrate when people pass away, especially when they pass away because of uh, prostate cancer. He struggled with that, and finally he he left. And uh, and it's a sad story. It really is. Sad story. All right. Goldman. That's right. That was his name. Goldman. W what was his first name, though? Because I forget his first name. Anyway. Uh, guys, let's talk about this. The first thing I want to mention to you guys, bees in politics. Many of you know that our president, our seventh president, Hagainda Hichilema, was in Luansha with uh, Luansha, not Luansha. He was in Luansha with a few of his uh, uh, team members. And while they were addressing a crowd, a swarm of bees descended on the crowd and everybody ran. And everybody knows I've been there. I mean, I've been stung by bees and wasps and things. And the very first thing you do is you get away because, you know, those things can cause a variety of damage, especially if it's a, a swarm of bees. And so everybody dispersed because that's what you do. Unfortunately, in Zambia, uh, these jokers, these uh, members of the NPF, the Notorious Patriotic Front, have somehow decided to, to, to skew it and to slant it, sprinkle a bit of mysticism and, and superstition, and also use it politically. The NPF are saying, no, Hagainda uh, Ichirima was chased by bees, and uh, someone sent them to go and disperse them. Now, guys, let's be clear. Human beings do not communicate with bees. You must understand that. Okay, the sooner you realize that, the better off you'll be. The moment you begin to think that somehow a witch doctor, some type of sangomba can walk up to a swarm of bees and say, all right, listen up, y'all. Stop buzzing. I've got a mission for you all. Okay, stop flying around. Need to tell you something. You see that crowd over there? Hagainda Ichilima is in that crowd. And I want every single one of you bees to fly up, go over there, and disperse that crowd. Zzz. Zzz. Go ahead, do it now. And then the bees. Oh, but today, guys. Do you do you hear? It? Are you listening to yourselves? Do you do you do you do you do you do you know how ridiculous you sound when you begin to imply that your you know? Yesterday, I posted this. I said, look, it's not possible for a human being to send bees to do anything. You should have seen the comments in the comment section. Oh, Mwewa, you didn't grow up in the village. Eh? You don't know the power of the dark side. You don't even know Indoshi. Indo there are some powerful Indoshi out there. That's nonsense. Don't listen. Don't do that. It behooves me. It really does. It chaps my hide, yanks my chain, boils my blood, ruffles my feathers when I hear you people talk about, no, Mwewa, you, that is the dark side. You are unaware of the dark forces. Dark forces. There's no such thing. It was. Let me tell you what it was. It was just a swarm of bees that descended on the crowd. The crowd dispersed. End of story. There's nothing spiritual about that. Nobody sent anybody anything. Those bees were not there at the behest of a witch doctor or a sangomba or anything else. And those bees are not partisan. Because you see, the way the NPF have narrated that story, it is as if the bees are saying, Awe, inde, na UPND. Kuno tatu, fire. Have you ever heard of such nonsense? Mwaritala unfwa po such no... Kuno kuruansha, fwe, 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 fwe ma bees kuno. Tatuleva, fwe ba kuruansha kuno fwe ma bees. Tatuleva fwaya wa haka inde ichidima. 
Today, ni guys. Zzz. Yo, Kwena. Tua, papa. You can pop pics. So there's no such thing as that. Uh, let's talk about the Ugandan pasta. Um, there's a guy that he's asked his, his, his congregation to donate $300 so that he can buy a luxury uh, Range Rover. Now, let's be clear. I'm not opposed to a pastor being taken care of by the church because it's, it's a wonderful thing. I mean, the, if you've got a pastor that preaches the word of God, a pastor that feeds you spiritually, a pastor that serves the community, a pastor that wants to see you and your family win. There's nothing wrong with a congregation coming together and say, you know what, let's bless our pastor. Let's bless him. Indeed, there's nothing wrong. This is why it's important for churches to run properly. If a church is a one-man show, if a church has a pastor that says to the congregation, I need a luxury Mercedes Benz, and I think you guys need to donate each $300 so that I can drive a, a, a Mercedes, a, a Range Rover, and so that God can bless you. When you've got a one-man show that uses his undue influence to coerce, because that's what that is. It's manipulation. It's coercion. It's deception. When you have a pastor that uses his position as the pastor of the church to manipulate you to augment his luxurious lifestyle, you've got a problem. Now, there's nothing wrong with a church board, a church structure to sit down with the church and say, you know what? We love our pastor and we want to, we want to take care of our pastor. And, and we believe that our congregation are able to come together and bless our pastor. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's everything wrong when the head of the that church, especially these papa churches, okay, they stand up in front of the congregation. God spoke, especially when they say this, when they say, God's spoken to me. Well, God doesn't even talk to you, okay? God has spoken to me. Each one of you jokers have to give me $300 so that I can go out there and buy me a brand new Range Rover, a brand new Lexus, so that God can turn around and bless you. That's manipulation. There's no place in the body of Christ for it. But oh, here it is. You got this Ugandan joker who's taking his instructions straight from the handbook of people like uh, Jesse Duplantis and uh, uh, Ken Copeland, whom, you know, these guys are veteran preachers, but I disagree with that type of uh, prosperity preaching. You know, those guys, Jesse Duplantis, I mean, <laughs> you and I are talking about Range Rovers. In America, these guys tell their congregations, I've got a $65 million plane that God's told me that you guys have to buy for me. $65 million. It's a form of manipulation, and it has no place in the body of Christ. Your commission is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, bring hope to a lost and dying world. And in the process, Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all these things shall be added unto you. But if you are that type of preacher, your focus is only on prosperity. Because that's the thing now. Now these churches, I'm a church, Isaiah. That's all they talk about is God's going to bless you. Oh, God's going to give you a plane. God's going to give you a Mercedes Benz. God's going to, they never talk about redemption. They never talk about overcoming uh, tragedy and, and heartache and pain. They never talk about God lifting you up out of the mire clay of, of degradation and planting your feet on a higher ground. It's all about cars, money, cell phones, uh, prosperity and wigs and flashy clothes and fancy shoes and Louis Vuitton and Gucci and it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. And so here it is. You've got this Ugandan who's, uh, he's told his congregation, uh, give me $300 each 
And everything, oh, by the way, everything over and above the 300, I get to keep. No accountability, nothing. These are the types of churches that raise the money for the, for the car. This is what's going to happen. That pastor is going to, because, you know, these guys, these guys have a spell, an influential spell on their congregation. He'll just manipulate the congregation. They will give. But here's the thing. He will not tell the congregation how much they raised, okay? Because usually with these things, the money raised is usually over and above. That wouldn't be so bad. But the bad part about it is he's not, the church is not going to tell the congregation we asked for $300, $300 each. The car cost $50,000, $70,000. We raised $150,000. The surplus, the money that we raised over and above the original cost of the car, we're going to channel towards this program and that program, and they don't do that. They will raise more than $200,000. They will buy the car, but everything that's over and above, guess who gets to keep that? The pastor. And the pastor will simply say, thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Chapa, umuzulu. And he's going to be laughing all the way to the bank. That's not the gospel. All righty. And, and it chaps my hide that I see Zambians going to Uganda. Are you, are you nuts? And, and then there you are sitting in the congregation with the Zambian flag. And, and what you're doing is that you're, you're influencing your fellow Zambians to buy plane tickets to go see a man that is telling you something that your local pastor can tell you. I mean... It just, it just, this is why I keep telling you the strength of any community is the local church. It's not for you guys to be hopping from church to, it's fine to go to conferences. You know, it's fine to, to go to other countries and say, you know what, let's go to this conference. But many of you are church hoppers. You're not even, you don't even serve in your local church, but there you are. You fly to Uganda, you fly to Ghana, you fly to Nigeria, you're under the influence of this papa, you under the influence of you get confused, and you are not even marriage type. Even if you get married, your marriage will be destroyed because you are just a papa for all. That's all. And and the especially women who follow these guys. Oh my goodness. The most difficult women to deal with in the whole world. There is nothing worse than dealing with a woman that's a papa follower. No, she can't even cook for you. She say, yo, until the papa tells me to cook for you, who are you to tell me to cook for you? But if my papa tells me, cook for your husband, oh, those are dangerous women. Don't marry such. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. All righty. Uh, lastly, ECL's message to the Zambian football team. I found this curious, and I found it funny how the former president, first of all, he made the mistake by putting the, the cell phone Guys, I keep telling you, vloggers, creators, listen to me when I tell you, when you're doing a live broadcast, never put the device, your phone, your camera, never have the device below your chin. Why? Because that is a very unflattering angle. It must be eye level or slightly above, never below. Here's the former president. He gets on there, you know, and he was a fish out of water because, he, you know, he doesn't, he's not accustomed to doing this. So, you know, he starts talking and then he was trying to get a word of encouragement and give a word of encouragement to our girls, which is fine, which is okay. But what I have a problem with is that he took that opportunity to sell the idea that he wants to rerun for president. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself because I also believe in myself. I want to be president. Of this nation again, I believe in myself, but that's neither here nor there. I'm just telling you, you girls, you can do it. We love you. Believe in yourself. I found that that, that was wrong. 
the the former the sixth and former president should not have taken that opportunity to encourage our girls and mix and match it with his own agenda of wanting to run for president again wrong who's advising these people do they not have teams that sit around them and say no 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 our former president if you Come on, guys, let's get with the program. Let's not embarrass the former head of state. Let's not do that. All right. That's all I had to say. I've been speaking for how long? 30 minutes? Good grief. That's a long time. All right. Zach Zulu says, I hear you, Mr. Muera, but it's not all pastors who do those things. Yes, I understand. It's not all pastors. But a lot of them do, especially on social media. They do. <laughs> so this is the, the impersonation. <laughs> hey, guys, thank you so much for watching. God bless. Have a great day and a great